Scott to talk about hemp. Simon, hemp, what a brilliant particle. I've been using it for donkey's years. Yeah. Um, oh. Talk, talk oh. me through it. Why, why it, is hemp so good? There's a lot of things about hemp that you know, people believe that it's the size of the, uh, the particle. It's a relatively small product. Um, so it's very similar to what a fish might naturally eat, like yeah. snails, so some of the invertebrates that a fish might find naturally in, in the Yeah, in the I lake. guess once it's cooked it's quite dark and yeah. if you do happen to see some natural snails in the lake they are very Often much they like carpet, it. Often they carpet the marginal gravel, don't yeah, they? Yeah. And, you know, hemp would look a bit like that. And I guess um, it, the crunchiness as well with a hemp The, the crunchiness similar. I think is, it would be similar, definitely. Uh, the other thing about it is it gives off, it's got an oiliness to it. Anybody yes. that's cooked hemp at home will see that beautiful oily slick you get on the surface of hemp when you cook it and that's inherently very attractive so most of the cyprinid fish are the coarse fish that we we would all fish for so your roach your bream your tench and of course carp uh, absolutely love hemp uh, you know it's a really really good all-round coarse fishing bait but as a carp fisherman it's a, a very vital tool and weapon in our yeah. Uh, armory yeah it's been used for years and years and years in carp mm. fishing is again is there anything you do different with your hemp um, to make it stand out or yeah, is it good I, enough on its I, own you know when you buy a, a bag from from a shop like hinders like this yep. it comes dry you know obviously you guys have got a very good website with good instructional stuff on how to prepare yep. your hemp if you've not cooked it before and i think that's something that puts off anglers when they see a bag of something yeah. dry in the shop, they think, well, actually, I'm not quite sure how to go about preparing that. Yeah, but well, it is very simple to do, isn't yes, it? You can see listen, the videos online, you can see it yeah, on the, our YouTube channel. It is very easy to do. My wife will tell you, Kev, I am the world's worst cook. Sandwich making is about <laughs> the limit of my culinary skills. I'm certainly no Michelin star cook, but I can do hemp, so it can't be tricky. Um, but yeah, I would often, um, when, I, when I soak it, I would soak it with some salt. Uh, okay. Often some chili flakes, um, but you can pimp it up a bit. You know, use your imagination. Try something. If it, you know, if it doesn't work, you know, so what? You, try, you know, you, you know, you know the, the, what comes up with why we have here, for example, salt and pepper hemp is because someone tried it and it worked. Yeah. So you know, there, there's a you know, if you go to a supermarket, there's a wealth of things you could try cooking up with your hemp. But um, I find, from my personal use. Um, soak it with some salt and some chilli flakes creates a fabulous yeah. bait. Do you always cook it yourself or do you use the, the uh, jars? I definitely use the jars. I, I'm, I, I love to cook. Uh, I would say the same for tiger nuts. A big, patch of, big batch of uh, particles in a burko boiler yeah. and then I bag them in smaller bags uh, and I take them out for trips. However, and this is really, really good for me, is you know, if, if I'm running short or I'm on a really big shoulder fish or I find a couple of fish in an area and think, well, I could pre-bait that, Having a few jars in the back of the car is absolutely fantastic. Yeah, so I guess it's not always cost effective to cook the maximum amount and take loads with you every session. So no. you take what you think you're going to need and always keep these jars. Yeah, a couple of jars in the back of the car, they don't take much space up. Um, my terrier can live around them. And um, you know, I have them in the back of the car. And if, if I walk around the lake and think, well, I quite like to put a bit of bait on that spot, You've always got I've got a jar with me. So I'm a great advocate of having a few jars. But for the, the bulk of my angling, I would, I'd have always a, cook a, your a own. big batch up made up. Yeah, that's right. Okay, so what sort of quantities do you, again, do you use in your typical session? Okay, that's a good question. We, again, it, it depends a lot on the, on the situation and on the number of yes. fish. Because we've mentioned uh, a shoulder roach or bream coming in on this. Roach love this stuff. They'll clean up quite a lot. Yeah. If I'm fishing a, a lake that's specifically got carp in it, nothing else, then a few hundred grains, an egg cup full, is quite yeah. a bit sprayed. Um, however, you know, a jar like that, if there's a few, maybe 20 or 30 doubles coming in swim, that's gone in a moment. Yes, so yeah. you need to judge it a bit on the fishing situation, um, the weather and the number of fish in front of you. So if, if I'm um, spotting bait out and I know that there's big shoals of fish in the lake, then be confident to put quite a bit out if the weather's right. And on those hot, muggy days when the fish aren't really yeah. feeding, don't think, well, this is the wonder bait, yeah. put it all in, start light, and you can always put a bit more in if the fish come onto you well. Um, so yeah, less is more. You can always put a bit more out. You can't take it yeah. out. Um, and it is. I, I tend to find in my fishing that once they get on it, they do eat large, can eat large quantities. Oh, they of can. It. Yeah. So, uh, uh, the other thing I've really watched one of the uh, for me, I, I do a lot of margin fishing, Kev. Yeah. Uh, um, I often I like the fact that I can put a handful of hemp in on what looks like a quite a dirty bit of lake bed in the margin. You know, I'm better peering with my polaroids on. Look down. And you put a bit of hemp in, you come back a week later, and there's a little glowing patch of gravel. Yeah, so now, know I know where I put the hemp, yeah. but no one else necessarily does. So it's great for that. Yeah. And you put it, you, uh, surprisingly, how you, know, you can put a really quite a small handful of hemp on a spot, come back a week later, and there's a patch of gravel, and you think, 
someone's been visiting. You know that it's yeah. been visiting. And so I might drop in there for a night. So yeah, I, I use it a lot for pre-baiting little spots in the edge. So I, I'll get through a fair bit of hemp every year. Yeah, I think uh, very similar to my type of fishing, although I fish busy day tickets, fishing at range, I think once you get them feeding on hemp on a spot, they polish it off mm. and it's nice and clean and you can fish a, fish a tidy rig over the top. And what I tend to find is they keep coming back to the spots and feeding. Yeah. Once you've got that spot polished, they almost recognise it as a dinner plate and they keep coming back. Yeah, so you definitely. can keep dropping on the spots and they get visited regularly. I think, and I think Hemp does that so well because it's small and the grains get in amongst the stones on the bottom, the smell it goes into the sand, into the silt, and it can really, yeah, they keep coming over. Just have one more look, yeah. one more look. And of course you turn up and put a balanced nut out on the spot, you get a bite, perfect. Bang, job done. Okay, well that's a good little insight to uh, a, the good old fashioned Hemp that is very much Fantastic carp catch and bait. Um, thank you for your time. Right, my pleasure. Cheers. Good to see you.